Hey everyone, my name is Sean LeBlanc and I'm a wedding and portrait photographer based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where I live with my beautiful wife and my two young, very energetic boys. And so I got my first Nikon DSLR camera on a mountain biking trip to Moab, Utah. It was about 10 years ago. And on that, that trip, I, to be honest, I did very little mountain biking and a lot of playing around with my camera trying new angles and compositions and playing around with lights. And it was really at that point that I fell in love with photography. And so when I got back, I, uh, I started photographing families, which eventually led to wedding work. And I started to enter some competitions with that wedding work. And that ultimately led to some destination wedding photography work. <clears throat> and I was doing this all the while I was an engineer at a large energy company here in Calgary. I used to work in their wind power group and would often take my camera out to projects to photograph the, uh, the, the sites that I was working on. But then in 2016, I had the opportunity to photograph a beautiful destination wedding in Japan. And it was an opportunity that I almost missed because of my corporate world commitments as an engineer. And so it was really at that point that I started to look at leaving the corporate world behind and pursuing my passion to become a, a full-time photographer. And so eventually I took a leap of faith and resigned from the corporate world. So this is about three years ago. And uh, this is a photo of me moments before walking down the hallway uh, with my letter of resignation to tell my boss that I was giving up a 14 year career as an engineer to pursue my passion for photography. And so I built a studio. So I live on two acres uh, on the west side of Calgary, and I, I built a studio out here. And that's primarily where I operate out of now. So I photograph luxury weddings, uh, both local and destination, and also uh, photograph fine art portraiture. But I'm here today to, to talk to you about creative lighting. So how to transform ordinary portraiture into extraordinary artistry, again, using creative light. And so I'm going to be talking about two forms of light. So natural light, so the available light that's around us, as well as manufactured light, and specifically off-camera flash, and how I use those to, to create compelling artistry. So starting with natural light. So there's really three forms that I'm always looking for. So the first is soft light. So that's the light that you would see during dusk hour or on a cloudy day. Directional light. So that's when, you know, late in the afternoon when the sun is a little bit lower and creating more of a, a directional light. And then bright, harsh light when you have a bright sunny day out and there's just light everywhere. So how do you work with those forms of light? So starting with soft dusk light. So typically what I'll do in this case is I will underexpose. So starting with this portrait here. So this, this was taken on a cloudy day. So you can see all that soft light that's around the couple here. And you know, from a composition perspective, they're in the third of the frame, which is nice. A bit of a nice moment here on a clean background. So it is a nice portrait, but I knew there was a way to take it to the next level. And so what I ended up doing was taking quite a few steps back, using an overhead tree as a way to kind of fill the frame and fill the, uh, the area of this open sky a bit more. And then I underexposed, as I was saying before. And so when I was able to do that, I got more of a silhouette profile of my clients here. Then it was a matter of just asking them to walk across the ridge line. So that way I was to capture this beautiful portrait of them that you see here. And so when you look at that transition from a proper exposure with, again, a clean background and a nice moment, but then looking at it from a different perspective, underexposing to capture more of a silhouette, and bringing in some of those beautiful colors, uh, you can see that it really does create more of a compelling portrait. Here as well, this was on a wedding day. So again, taking a proper exposure of the couple, we see they're in the third of the frame. So compositionally, it is nice. But again, I knew there was a way to take this to the next level. So what I ended up doing was using a, a much longer lens. So a 200 F2 telephoto lens from Nikon. And again, underexposing, and this time to add a bit of drama uh, or, or a bit of a creative element into the photograph, I just had my assistant take the bride's veil, simply throw it up in the air. And as it was coming down, I was taking rapid fire shots. 
and I was able to capture this beautiful portrait. So again, when you look at that transition from a normal exposure in soft light to an underexposed portrait, where now I'm bringing in more of that beautiful color and more of those uh, silhouette elements, you can see it's a much more compelling portrait. And here as well, this is just another example where I found some overhanging trees as a way to kind of fill the frame with an open sky here. Again, underexposing to bring in some of those beautiful color elements of the sky. And during this time, this was taken in dusk hour. So of course the light was very low. I found this uh, clean background to place my clients on. So everything came together really well for this. So directional light. So again, this is when the sun is lower. So later in the afternoon and we're getting more direction from the available light. And so in that case, I'm always looking for a dark background to place my clients on. So this is a, this is a fantastic app. It's called Sunseeker. And what it does is it'll tell you where the sun is going to be at any given time on any given day. So it's really helpful, especially on a wedding day when you're trying to plan out your, your portraits or your shots, just to know where that sun is going to be. And so it's one that I use all the time. So this is a good example uh, when the light was a little bit lower. So late in the afternoon, the sun was just peering over the hill in behind this bride here. And you can see uh, she is on a dark background and that beautiful low light sun light is hitting just the back of her here and creating this brim light all around her. And so when you have that nice brim light, uh, again, on a dark background, it really creates that separation. And so from there, you get a really compelling portrait. And it was as simple as asking her to take her wedding dress and kind of throw it beside her just to get a bit more of a moment, a bit more of a natural looking shot from her as well. And also by doing that, you can see that the sun is hitting uh, the back of her wedding dress and just really creating a nice, a nicely lit profile for her. So for this photograph, you can see that the sun is in behind the couple here. Again, it was one that, um, you know, could use a little bit of work. It is a nice portrait. They're kind of off to the, to the right, but I knew there was a way to take this to the next level. And so what I ended up doing was uh, coming around the front and finding just a, a stream of light, again, more directional light that was coming through one of these columns that you see here. So again, it was a, a bright sunny day. We were getting nice directional light from that. And so the sun was coming through, hitting these columns and creating sort of a stream of light in between the columns. And so all I did was I placed my client here in that stream of light and just asked her to kind of move around, sway her dress a little bit. And then as, as I was doing that, I noticed a bright area in behind her. So she was on a dark background, but there was another uh, area of directional light hitting uh, part of the structure in behind. And so what I did is I, I, I placed her fiance in that area just to add another element. So another element of uh, him as a silhouette with that side profile that you see there. So again, we're going from a very ordinary portrait. And then by looking for another angle and looking for those uh, areas of directional light, I was able to get a really compelling portrait here. And this is just another example where uh, the sun was a little bit lower. So we're getting more of that directional light that I was talking about. And it's creating, again, this beautiful brim light just on the woman's face here as a way to kind of separate her from the background, from the backdrop. So then bright light. So this is when you have all of this harsh uh, sunlight sort of everywhere. What, what do you do with that? What can you create from that? And so often I will look to create a silhouette. So I'll show you how I do that. So this is a good example here. So in this case, we're at a very popular venue here in Calgary and there's lots of available uh, harsh uh, sunlight. It's a very bright and sunny day outside. And so that light is hitting the roof structure of this building and casting these column shadows that you see here. And so originally I started with this portrait, which is nice, but you can see the light on their faces. Uh, it is quite harsh light. And so in this case, I thought, well, maybe we could do uh, some form of silhouette. 
So, and the thing to keep in mind with silhouettes is they're as simple as finding a very bright area in behind a shaded area. So this is what I was able to create from that. So again, you see that wall in behind here, that concrete wall. We have that bright area where the sunlight is coming through the ceiling, hitting that wall in behind. And I was able to find a shadow area or an area in shade where I was able to place the bridal party uh, under this canopy here. And so that way I was able to create more of a silhouette type look for this, uh, this portrait. And you can see like with silhouettes, like they're all about shapes. So all I asked the bridal party to do was turn and face each other. So that way we could get the, the profile, the side profile of all their faces. But then even taking it a step further where I asked them to uh, move their hands away from their sides, the, the bouquets. So that way I was able to get some uh, really nice uh, shapes again for the silhouette and have everything come together for this bridal party portrait. So this is another example here where we've got some bright, harsh sunlight coming in through the window here. And all I did for this portrait, I just asked them to take a little bit of a, a step back from that harsh light. Uh, so that way they're in more of a, a shaded area. And here you can see we're getting some more nice even light onto their faces. So it is a nice portrait, but again, I knew there was a way to take this to the next level to utilize that harsh light. Again, thinking of a silhouette. So in this case, I just swung around to the side, asked them to face one another and underexposed. So that way there was this bright area in behind. And I was able to use some of these interesting architectural elements as a way to frame them. So here on the right, but also utilizing some of those elements as a way to help draw the eye towards them. So you can see we have a, a leading line coming down from the bottom of the frame here, but then also mixing some of the color elements too. So they're on this uh, cool blue sky and I'm mixing that with more of a warm foreground here. So using opposing primary colors to create this, uh, this portrait. So here we went from this ordinary portrait where again, we, we do have some nice soft light on their face, but it was just as simple as, as turning uh, to the side uh, of them, having them face one another, underexposing, and using some of these beautiful architectural elements that were part of the, uh, the portrait to create this compelling uh, portrait of them here. Here, this is another example of a wedding I photographed in Spain where there was lots of available light outside. It was a bright and sunny day. So we just found a, a shaded area. And so you can see in the background that harsh sunlight is coming down through the alleyway here, creating that bright area. So again, I thought silhouette, given there was the shaded area that we, we could work with. And it was a matter of using this iron gate in behind them as a way to frame them and kind of bring everything together for this portrait. And here, this is a really good example of being outside on a bright and sunny day. So a bluebird day where you have that, that bright, harsh sunlight everywhere. Of course, it's lighting up the cloud and behind. So again, I found a shaded area, which, which just happened to be an overhanging tree where I could place my clients, have them look at one another. So that way I'm creating more of a side profile as a silhouette and then have a nice moment here as well. So moving on to manufactured light then. So again, this is, this is about using off-camera flash. So when I'm using off-camera flash, I'm often thinking of a way I can modify the light that's coming from the flash. Is there a way I can color it? If you think back to that portrait where I was talking about uh, that warm mixed with cool uh, opposing primary colors. So there's always an opportunity to do that with off-camera flash. But then also, is there an opportunity to use a flash at full power, say on a bright and sunny day? So I'm gonna talk about those here. And so with off camera flash, a lot of the students that I work with, I always try to explain it as simple as possible. And these are the steps that I always follow when I am using off camera flash. So the first is I always shoot manual. This just allows a lot of flexibility not only with my camera, but also with my flash. And so I'm always, always on manual when I'm shooting. From there, I'll think of composition. So is there a creative angle? Perhaps that's 
at a third of the frame. Perhaps there's a way to frame my, my clients. So I'm always thinking of composition. From there, I'll expose for the ambient light. Okay, so if it's a bright and sunny day, I'll be around ISO 100. Whereas if it's a very dark room, say at a wedding reception, I'll be at 3200. I always make sure my shutter speed is less than 1 250th of a second, which was the, the sync speed of my DSLRs. And uh, that way I'm just able to utilize the full power of my flash. And then finally, I'll think of aperture. So that's for creative effects. So if I'm using a wide open aperture, uh, I'm able to get more of a blurred background or a smaller aperture where I, if, if I want things more in focus. From there, I'll underexpose the ambient by one to two stops, and then I'll adjust my flash output. So with off-camera flash, these are the steps that I'm always following. So in terms of the, the off-camera flashes that I'm using, I have uh, a strobe that I'll often take with me. This is around 500 watt seconds, but I'm always using speed lights as well. And so you can really get uh, some creative effects with both of these strobes here. And you can see the modifiers that I have. I'll always have a grid on my off-camera flash as well as uh, a gel. And so I'm going to talk about that here as well. So without these modifiers, when these flashes do fire, you can see that there's, there's quite a lot of light spread. So as soon as the flash goes off, it's kind of throwing light everywhere. And it's when you put these modifiers on either a grid or a snoot that you see here, it really helps to focus the light. So again, whenever I'm working with off-camera flash, I'll either have a grid or a snoot on my flash. So that way I can really help focus the light. So with this creative portrait here, you can see that I used a very focused uh, beam of light for my off-camera flash. And so this will give you just a, a bit of a taste of the behind the scenes where here's my off-camera flash and I have my snoot on the front. So that way I'm able to create this very focused beam of light coming from that snoot. So you can see it's only lighting up her face here. And so in that instance, I was able to get the more of a creative uh, photograph. So without that snoot, it would have threw light everywhere, including this wall onto the bride. But by having such a focused beam of light, I'm able to get more of a, a creative photograph here. Here as well, for behind the scenes, you can see here's my assistant. She's holding my off-camera flash uh, with a grid on the flash and then simply holding it up and pointing it behind my clients. Again, with, with silhouettes, if you remember, it's about having that bright area in behind your clients and then underexposing. And so that's exactly what I did with this portrait. So again, you can see my my assistant here holding my off-camera flash, again with a grid, having it pointed directly at the wall and behind my clients in order to create this silhouette and bring in some of these architectural elements into the portrait. Here, this is an example of, um, I, I photographed a wedding at the Calgary Zoo. Again, it's, it's a nice portrait, fairly nice moment, uh, using some of the, um, the leaves as a way to kind of frame them but I knew there was a way to take this to the next level. And so as we were walking through the zoo, I saw this uh, giant leaf. And when I saw this leaf, I noticed that it had this, this hole in it. And I thought, wow, that would be a really neat way to frame the couple, but then I could use off-camera flash, not only behind them, but also onto the leaf to help light the foreground. So what did that look like? So this was the result here. So where I simply had them face one another, again, I had my off-camera flash in behind them uh, to create this beautiful brim light that you see on their faces. Again, that was a way to kind of separate them from the backdrop or from the background here. And then as I was holding up the leaf, I had another flash pointed at the leaf. So that way I was able to bring out some of these details, some of these lines, so that way I'm making the most use of leading lines in this case. And so when you look at the original portrait that I took of them, which again is quite nice, but then what you can create by utilizing some creative light, especially with off-camera flash, uh, it's, it's quite a different portrait and more of an artistic uh, creative portrait. So for this portrait here, I'm gonna talk about how I used off-camera flash to really help my clients stand out in the frame. 
And so you can see I'm using a longer lens at 200 F2. So I'm shooting across a valley. This gives you an idea of how far away I was from them. So again, with that long telephoto lens, I'm able to get incredible compression and also shot at F2. It's almost like a 3D effect. Um, and so that's an amazing lens that I love to use a lot. And so here you can see my assistant. She's holding uh, my, my speed light. This is on pretty much full power. Uh, I'm not using a grid because in this case, I really just want to get as much light onto my clients as, I, as possible. You can see we have lots of available light here. So in this case, I really don't need to focus the light, um, but rather just get as much light onto them as possible. And so you can see what a, what a difference it makes by uh, having light hit them from that speed light on full power. So this is just using natural light here. And then again, the final shot that I was able to get. So that was from, uh, from that little speed light, again, on full power shooting across the valley uh, to capture this beautiful portrait. Uh, here now we're back to the Calgary library. So in this case, I'm using two off camera flashes. Okay, the first one I placed on the floor and, but now I'm starting to color the light that's coming from the flash. So in this case, I'm using a blue gel, just a blue gel that goes on the front of my flash. Here is where I place the other flash and I'm using an orange gel or a warm gel to help light the back of them. And so you can see when I'm using those color gels, again, I'm able to get those opposing primary colors that I've talked a bit about before of that cool mixed with warm. And by using that off camera flash, the one in behind them, I'm creating that bright spot. And so again, with bright spots, I'm thinking silhouette. So in this case, I underexposed a little bit and I was able to capture this beautiful portrait. So out here, so now, so now we're out in Pato Lake, Alberta, beautiful scenic area. And so I had the opportunity to go out there with, with a wonderful couple. And so I took this portrait and as you can see, I'm just using natural light that's available. And, uh, you know, it, it is a nice portrait. I was able to use part of the lake as a way to frame them. I tried a different composition where I just found an elevated area and used this tree line as a way to frame them. And both are nice, but you can see they really don't stand out in the portrait all that well. You know, with this one here, we do have a line that's coming from the lake that is going through them. And here they kind of blend into the background. So in this case, I used an off camera flash. So all I did was I, I asked the groom here to hold a, a speed light beside him and have it pointed at this umbrella. And so when the flash fired, the light from the flash hit the umbrella and actually trickled down onto their faces. So lighting their faces. And as you can see, it created this nice brim light here. So that way I was able to separate them and help, help them stand out in the frame a little bit more from this dark background. And also I felt that this composition worked much better. So now I'm utilizing more of the lake as a leading line that's bringing towards, that's uh, leading towards my clients here. And so bringing more of those elements together. So again, that's using off camera flash. Here now I'm back in Canmore. And, you know, this is a really nice portrait. I'm outside, I'm working with uh, this harsh light. That's out. This, is, this was taken at uh, around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So when the sun is very high, you can see that I am using uh, some off-camera lighting here as well as a way to, to light up their, frame, their uh, faces. But you can see that their eyes are kind of squinted. That's just because there's so much light everywhere. And so I knew there was a way to kind of take this to the next level using off camera flash. And so this is just a, a short video. So you can see I've, I found a lower vantage point and rather than having this vast open sky, I'm actually using uh, the veil and the wind that's pushing the veil as a way to help fill the frame. And if you watch here, you can see my off camera flash firing. So now I'm using a 500 watt second strobe. <clears throat> as a way to help bring some, some fill light to their face. And so this was the final result here. So you can see with the veil and how the wind was carrying the veil, I was able to help fill the frame a little bit more. 
I was able to keep all the three sisters, the famous mountain backdrop in Canmore uh, there as well. You can see they're on a clean background, but also the, the flash on full power, the light from that is then hitting their face and just helping to create a bit of fill light onto them. So there were times where the flash didn't fire. So this, this gives you an idea of what the, the portrait looks like uh, without that flash hitting them. And then here as well. So you can see that it really helps them to, to stand out in the frame. And so this is a great example of when I would use an off-camera flash on full power. So this is, this is another example of a portrait where I'm using two off-camera flashes. And I actually put together a short video that I wanted to share with you in terms of how I set this shot up. So for this creative portrait, again, I have my flash here to light those trees in the foreground. I pretty much had to have it set uh, about three fourths uh, full power, just because we've got lots of ambient light here. Um, also, I had my 24 to 70 on my Nikon D850. And that was just to get a wider angle and bring in that foreground of the trees uh, with my clients in the background. Um, and my assistant on the other side of the mountain holding the flash, I had that flash set to pretty much full power because we had so much ambient light again. Um, also, I used a bit of a wider aperture at f3.5 and that was to create a bit of a blurred foreground and have my clients crystal clear sharp in the background. Okay, so this photo beside, uh, or this photo right here, you can see my assistant holding my speed light, again, on full power. That way I was able to get some, some light onto them and help them stand out in the frame a little bit more. So when I brought all of those elements together, uh, here was the final portrait. So the first flash, as I, as I mentioned in the video, is on the ground, pointed at these trees in the foreground. Uh, I'm using a, a wider aperture at 3.5. That's to create this blurred foreground that you see here with my clients crystal clear, sharp in the background. Again, a bit of a wider lens so I can bring in some of these beautiful mountain elements and kind of have everything come together. So in summary, I talked about two forms of light. So the first being natural light or available light that I have to work with. So if I'm working with soft light, either at dusk hour or on a cloudy day, I tend to underexpose and look for creative elements that I can bring into the portrait. Uh, directional light, so again, that's when the sun is a little bit lower. I'll often look for a dark background that I can place my clients on, so that way I can really help them stand out in the frame. Bright, harsh light on a bright and sunny day, bluebird day. I'll look for silhouette opportunities, so an area where I can put my clients in a shaded area against that harsh, uh, bright area, so that way I'm able to get a silhouette. And then manufactured light, so specifically off-camera flash. And so whenever I'm using a flash, I'm always thinking of ways I can modify the light that's coming from my flash. So whether that's with a grid or a snoot, if I want to focus the light, or take those components off and just use the, the bare flash head on full power if I'm working uh, on it or in a, a bright sunny day. So using that, uh, those flashes at full power, but also how to color the, the light that's coming from the flash. So are there any creative opportunities I can use there? So again, thank you for joining me today. Again, my name's Sean LeBlanc. You can find me on Instagram at Sean LeBlanc. Uh, also, feel free to visit me on my website at www.seanleblancphotography.com.